country, Hungary, is the lone star state of Europe. <laughs> the main difference between our countries is that, unfortunately, the Ewing oil company is not paying corporate income tax in Budapest. <laughs> but independence, freedom, and sovereignty is what we Hungarians fought for in the last 500 years. We vote for Christianity in the Middle and Modern Ages. And we fought for Christian democracy in the 20th century and continue to fight to this day. We are a nation of 15 million in the heart of Europe with a unique language. You should know that I am an old-fashioned freedom fighter. I'm, I am also the longest serving prime minister in Europe, the only anti-migration political leader on our continent, a father of five and grandfather to five grandchildren, a leader of a country that is under the siege of progressive liberals day by day. There are many things that a Central European anti-communist, old-fashioned freedom fighter raised under communist rule never dared to dream of. One of them is giving a speech at the CPAC here in the United States. <laughs> in the land of the free, where the spirit of liberty shines brighter than at any other place on earth. If somebody has doubts whether progressive liberals and communists are the same, just ask us Hungarians. We fought them both, and I can tell you they are the same. So we had to defeat them again. And since 2010, we keep winning, winning, and winning. Last time, Last time, with the endorsement of Donald Trump, which we are grateful for. So much winning that we are just scratching our heads. You know, winning has become our daily habit. But, but we know the old saying, yesterday's home runs don't win today's games. I've been a member of parliament for 32 years spending 16 years in opposition and 16 years as prime minister. I learned that a quitter never wins and the winner never quits. This is the secret of our victories. You have to stand by your country in good times and in bad times. Dear friends, I'm here to tell you we should share our experiences. I am here to tell you that our values, the nation, Christian roots, and family can be successful in the political battlefield, even nowadays when political life is ruled by liberal hegemony. I am here to tell you how we made these values successful and mainstream in Hungary. Perhaps our story can help you Keep America great. So here is our story. The key to our success story is that when we fight, we give at least 100%. We tell the truth and represent the truth even if half the world attacks us for it. You cannot win half-heartedly. You either give everything you have got and win or play it safe and lose. So first and foremost, we need to trust our Judeo-Christian teachings. They help us decide what actions are right and what actions are wrong. If you believe in God, you also believe that we humans were created in God's image. Therefore, we have to be brave enough to address even 
the most sensitive questions, migration, gender, and the clash of civilizations. Don't worry, a Christian politician cannot be racist. So we should never hesitate to heavily challenge our opponents on these issues. Be sure Christian values protect us from going too far. Moreover, we know that at the end of our life, the moment will come when all our actions will be judged. So you can't do anything, you have limits. As Clint Eastwood said, a man has got to know his limitations. <laughs> but unfortunately, the left in politics does not know any limitations. And my friends, as it happens, today's progressives try to separate Western civilization from its Christian roots once again. They are crossing a line that should never be crossed. If you separate Western civilization from its Judeo-Christian heritage, the worst things in history happen. Let's be honest. The most evil things in modern history were carried out by people who hated Christianity. Don't be afraid to call your enemies by their name. You can't play safe, but they will never show mercy. Consider, for example, George Soros, as you call him here. In Hungary, in Hungary we call him Yuri Bachi, which means Uncle Georgie. The wealthiest and one of the most talented Hungarians on earth. Just a hint, be careful with talented Hungarians. Uh, I know George Soros very well. He is my opponent. He believes in none of the things that we do. And he has an army at his service. Money, NGOs, universities, research institutions, and half the bureaucracy in Brussels. He uses this army to force his will on his opponents, like us Hungarians. He thinks that the values dear to all of us led to the horrors of the 20th century. But the case is exactly the opposite. Our values save us from repeating history's mistakes. The horrors of Nazism and Communism happened because some Western states in continental Europe abandoned their Christian values. And today's progressives are planning to do the same. They want to give up on Western values and create a new world, a post-Western world. Who is going to stop them if we don't? Dear friends, I have also learned that in order to win, it is not enough to know what you are fighting for. You also have to know how you should fight. My answer is, play by your own rules. But how do you do that? It is as simple as it sounds. You must play to win. You cannot expect victory and plan for defeat. You have to believe that you are better than your left liberal opponents are. And don't care what the liberals say. In Hungary, we had to build not just a physical wall on our borders and the financial wall around our families, but a legal wall around our children to protect them from the gender ideology that targets them. Let's be clear, they think that parents should follow the progressive way of parenting. If they refuse to do so, they should be forced by the state. We Hungarians know this old communist trick and we reject it. Hungarian people rejected sexual orientation programs in schools without parental consent at a referendum again. Never before has there been a referendum in the long history of Hungary where such a huge majority of people said no to gender or anything. Now the Hungarian constitution 
Now the Hungarian constitution protects families and children. Let me quote a few sentences from our Hungarian fundamental law. Our constitution reads, the family and the nation constitute the principal framework of our coexistence. Hungarian state institutions are obliged to protect the Christian culture of Hungary. Hungary shall protect the institution of marriage as the union of one man and one woman. <laughs> family, ties, family ties shall be based on marriage or the relationship between parents and children. To sum up, the mother is a woman, the father is a man, and leave our kids alone. Full stop, end of discussion. <laughs> we have seen what kind of future the globalist ruling class has to offer. But we have a different future in mind. The globalists can all go to hell. I have come to Texas. Uh, <laughs> So, so we must take up the fight. Victory will never be found by taking the path of least resistance. We must take back the institutions in Washington and in Brussels. We must find friends and allies in one another. We must coordinate the movement of our troops because we face the same challenge. You have midterm elections this year, then presidential and congressional elections in 24, and we will have election in the European Parliament same year. These two locations will define the two fronts in the battle being fought for Western civilization. Today we hold neither of them, yet we need both. You have two years to get ready. I have to tell, it won't be easy, but don't be afraid. Just believe in St. Jan Paul's, the Polish Pope's teaching. There is no enemy that Christ has not already defeated. So let's go out and do it. God bless Texas. God bless our friendship. Good luck and goodbye.